The purpose of this podcast is to assist Title I leaders in the process of planning for school improvement utilizing the Comprehensive Needs Assessment Guide. It may be helpful for you to have access to the documents that were sent with this podcast as you are listening. Prior to thinking about plans for next year, it is important to collect and analyze data from the current year and past years in order to identify strengths and areas of need, and then further narrow the focus to several priority areas that will most positively impact school improvement. A shared goal in both planning for school improvement and planning for the utilization of Title I funds is to support school efforts to close the achievement gap for economically disadvantaged students. This process starts with getting the right people around the table. The first step on the Comprehensive Needs Assessment Guide asks you to form a planning group. Determine who will be on the team that leads this effort. Do I already have leadership teams in place for this purpose? Do we have meeting times designated? Use this podcast to help you determine what work the planning team will engage in. Don't forget to include your parent, student, and community stakeholders as appropriate. Next, you need to ensure that you have an end in mind to work towards. What is your vision for your school? Is that vision clear to both you and your planning team as well as other stakeholders? We have engaged in planning around this in our administrative meetings this year. Use the work from these meetings to help you during this process. It is important to think about what your school will look like when the district priorities of professional learning communities, effective instruction and leadership, and standards-based planning and instruction are alive in every classroom and office. Before planning forward, it is important to critically look at any past Title I purchases and the impact they have had in your school. Use the return on investment document as well as any other 2013-2014 SIP documents like action plans as part of this review. The return on investment process will guide you through an analysis of each Title I purchase, including the alignment to the 2013-14 SIP and why the purchase was made, the cost of the investment, a review of the data sources that would help you determine if the purchase was implemented as intended and what impact was made on the data, as well as a reflection on that impact. Was it positive, questionable, or poor? Why? And could this be a viable reinvestment? Once completed, your ROI now becomes an important data source for planning forward. There is additional data that you will want to gather to help you focus on student needs. Some academic data will be provided to you from the Office of Accountability Research and Measurement. Other data you will want to consider includes student engagement data and data from the early warning system. The data you have regarding your school's infrastructure and support system is also critical. Don't forget to consider the recent Gallup survey results ratings on the MTSS and PLC rubrics, any observational data collected, as well as documents reflecting your family and community involvement efforts. Determine who will gather each data component and organize it for easy analysis by your team. As you begin your data analysis, you will use the Comprehensive Needs Assessment Analysis Table along with the guide to help you look at your data through the lens of our district priority areas. What does your data tell you about your school's consensus for, infrastructure for, and implementation of the district priority areas? As you use the CNA analysis document, the guiding questions in each column will help you focus your team on the discussion needed. As you analyze consensus, for example, use your data sources to answer, what does our staff believe about each area? Your recent survey data in the MTSS and PLC rubrics will be helpful here. Use these rubrics as well as the return on investment reflection and any action plans to help you determine how have we supported each area. 
Next, as you review action plans, it is important to consider what actions have we taken in this area. In other words, did we do what we said we would do? This can have an impact on how you look at your actual results. Lastly, results matter. Look at your student data. What does it say about academics and engagement? As you consider consensus, infrastructure, and actual implementation in each area, what are the results of our efforts? This data will help reveal continuing need areas for each of the district priorities. Remember that the vision you set for your school as you started this process comes back now. Now is the time to engage in a gap analysis. You've documented your current reality. What's the difference between your now and your future? Don't forget the last step of the analysis. You've acknowledged the gap between where your school is and where you want to be. You can't tackle every issue all at once. Look closely at the need areas revealed. Find a few things to work on. Focus on the few things that will have the biggest impact as you plan forward. Once those focus areas are determined, you can now use the decision-making protocol to align your school needs to possible purchasing decisions. We will talk a little more about this document as we look at a sample. Lastly, the process leads you to engage in planning forward for next year with your Title I funds. This planning for how your program expenditures support your identified needs and district priorities will become your Title I school-wide plan. We have a new document to capture this important work. Use the Excel worksheet to solidify your planning for the use of your Title I funds. For each area of focus for our school, if we engage in these actions with a defined support structure and a clear monitoring plan, and we use our Title I funds in this way, then we expect to gather this data and get these results. This should feel similar to developing a hypothesis statement. You've reviewed all your data, you've studied your school needs, and now you're making an informed database decision about actions you'll take for improvement and what impact you are expecting from those actions. Let's take a look at a sample. Here's a scenario for either an elementary or secondary school. In the Comprehensive Needs Assessment Analysis, as Gallup survey data was reviewed, it was determined that only 50% of staff felt their fellow employees are committed to doing quality work. This suggests that the consensus for a multi-tiered system of support is not solid, as my staff does not believe most of their colleagues are providing the best instruction for all students. In addition, when looking at the structures in place for the multi-tiered system of support in my school, I reviewed the MTSS rubric rating, where I observed that we have a low rating when looking at my staff's commitment to supporting all students with best practices. We had purchased an intervention teacher at the elementary level to provide pull-out academic supports and a graduation enhancement teacher at the secondary level to support students who lacked engagement. Our return on investment showed limited impact of these supports when looking at the hard data. When reviewing why this might be, we acknowledged that we did not have strong support structures in place for either teacher, and there was no consistent problem solving of the at-risk students to plan their interventions and monitor their progress during the year. At the end of the year, only 30% of students served by these teachers made progress either in learning gains in reading or in an increased GPA. A significant percentage of students, actually 33%, were served by these support staff members. So the need exists for support, but so far we did not make significant progress with the 4th graders served by the intervention teacher and the ninth graders served by the graduation enhancement teacher. In reflecting on through this process, it is clear that we still need to strengthen our tiers of support for our students 
but not without a stronger support plan for our intervention and graduation enhancement teacher, including time to plan with the classroom teachers and frequent problem solving for these at-risk learners. If we are going to purchase these supports again, we will need to consider creating and following a problem-solving schedule for the students, a planning schedule for the teachers and support staff, and also investing in research-based intervention resources. Now that I have my focus, I can take a look at the decision-making protocol. And since I want to continue to work on strengthening my school's multi-tiered system of support, I'll consult that row of the protocol to help me use my data, the MTSS rubric, as well as my student achievement data and the early warning system data to ensure I am focusing on the right things. The protocol lists the purchases I've already considered, the intervention teacher, and support staff to address the engagement needs of students. As I look at what support plan will be needed for these purchase, purchases, I've already considered them and I know these components will be critical. I'll need to ensure that I include time for intervention and support in the master schedule, create a planning schedule that includes both the classroom teachers and support staff, and develop a problem solving schedule for at-risk students. There are also some examples of documents that I can start my monitoring plan for this purchase. I can now create my Title I school-wide plan from the data analysis and reflection. If we provide academic support for at-risk learners in reading and support for disengaged students, with the plan to identify students, roles and responsibilities of classroom teachers and support staff, regular problem-solving session within a tiers of support plan, and use of research-based intervention resources, and monitor with a problem-solving schedule, a planning schedule, and data chats for the at-risk learner groups, we can hire an intervention teacher for fourth and fifth grade students and a graduation enhancement teacher for the ninth grade cohort and purchase intervention resources then we can expect to see increases in learning and engagement data, evidence in our sources of discovery education data, progress monitoring data from the intervention resources, and GPA and attendance data. Remember that the Excel document is also the start of the return on investment for the year. This links your planning for improvement to your progress monitoring of effort and impact throughout the year, and lastly, the analysis and reflection you will engage in at this time next year. As you are planning for this process, please know that we are here to support you. You will find included with this podcast and email allocations of your Title I funds, as well as targeted data provided to you by the Office for Accountability, Research, and Measurement. We have also planned clinics after hours to support you through this process on April 24th and May 7th from 4 to 6 p.m. at the district office. Our school improvement planning days will occur May 13th with all schools at Spartan Manor and May 14th, 15th, and 16th at district for each region. You can expect various support staff members from each district department there to help you. Please remember that this process was designed to set you up for the continuation of the school improvement process. The comprehensive needs assessment analysis can support the initial steps of the problem solving cycle for SIP planning. Your focus areas and planning align with steps three and four, and the articulation of your Title I school-wide plan and monitoring lead into steps five, six, and seven. The setup of your return on investment supports step eight. Please use this thinking and analysis as you invest into your planning for the use of your Title I funds during this time including the identification of your focus areas 
to continue your school improvement processes into the summer. Please let us know if you need any additional support through this process. We're always here to help you.